Welcome to this bonus episode of Tim Talk, the podcast every once in a while. Occasionally. Occasionally. On a rare moon about the DC animated universe, co-created by Bruce Tim. I am Chris Lord. I'm Cameron Dexter. And uh, we are back with another offshoot episode, this time uh, in honor of the holidays, specifically Christmas. We yes. Are, happy holidays, everybody. Yes, happy holidays. Yeah, we are dropping this on uh, Christmas Eve, in fact. Mm-hmm. We are recording it a few weeks in advance because we're both going to be traveling. Yep. But uh, we, Cameron pointed out, we've never done an episode on like Christmas movies and Christmas specials. And, and there's so many. There are so, and you, I didn't there's even realize so how many, how many there were until I started like doing a dive into it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I came in and you, I came into you just scrolling yeah. on the Christmas Carol parodies. Yeah. There's a lot. There's so many. Also, we'll get to it, but there is one definitive answer for what's the best version of a Christmas Carol. The Muppets one? Yes, exactly. Okay. Oh, we've we've already gotten to it. Fantastic. <laughs> How did you know I was going to say The Muppets? Because it's the one everyone talks about and it's the one I haven't seen. How have you not? Oh, my God. I, I didn't grow up with The Muppets. I think I've, I've, I'm think i sure I've talked about this before. I've never seen a Muppets movie. Until Muppets 4D Vision at Disney World, yeah. I'd never seen any Muppets property. But Muppets are great. I know they are. You never watched like The Muppets Show or Muppets <clears throat> Tonight? Mm-mm. Oh, my God. I grew up. so because I think I might have watched one episode of Muppet Babies. Okay, that fits. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, because like the Muppet Show was back on in like the I think like the eighties, and then they did a, a modernized version in the the nineties and two thousands. Um, that was called Muppets Tonight, and so you get the same idea. It's like uh, it's a little bit behind the scenes of putting on like a late night show sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But they had some really good. They had some really good, just like Muppet esque jokes in there. So one of my favorite episodes is the one with Pierce Brosnan. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So it's him, like you know, obviously it's I think it came out in ninety five. So I think it was him gearing up for Goldeneye. But he comes on and they're like they're gonna do a sketch about him playing James Bond, but it's the fact that he like doesn't know how to improvise and be off the cuff, and so he's actually like super clumsy and awkward going through like this whole whole sequence. Um, there's a great shellfish joke in there that I really really love. Great. Uh, and one of my other favorite ones was they had uh, their guest was Garth Brooks. And obviously the famous country singer. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, and now we're gonna have a song from Garth Brooks. And it's like the, the curtains open and it's uh, like the backdrop of like a, a French rooftop. And he's up there in like classic French beret and mustache and accordion. And he's singing a song. It's like, wait, I thought he was supposed to sing country. It's like, well, yeah, I didn't say which one. That's good. I like ah! that. I love the Muppets. It's all dad jokes. I'm here for it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we you so you mostly made a list of like your favorite TV episodes and TV specials, right? I did. Because okay. there's so many. I feel like every cartoon had a Christmas episode. Oh, absolutely. I was going through the list. Yeah, because I started out doing mine of, like, what are my favorite Christmas movies. I, I usually... So that's a good question for you, actually. Around the holidays, like, do you... When you're going to back and, like, revisiting your, your Christmas content, is it mostly TV shows or is it mostly movies? It, it's a mix of both. Okay. Uh, I mean, the movies, I kind of... They're kind of on in the background. Okay. It's the same movies every year. You have You, you have your elf. You have your... National Lampoon, mm-hmm. you have, um, you know, every one of them. And those are those are always on <clears throat> Grinch. Yeah. But recently, I've found it a lot more uh, therapeutic mm-hmm. to go back and watch, like, the old cartoons, not old cartoons, but, like, the cartoons that only would come on, like, on Cartoon Network during Christmas. Yeah. Uh, and it's so... There's something extra nostalgic about that well, yeah because you probably haven't revisited them much since then yeah uh so i've been doing that for the past couple of years and I, I try not to repeat them okay uh but i have you know four or five that like are my musts okay and i even have a uh nickelodeon put out like the best of nick christmas oh nice because mm-hmm. i feel like most of the nick because i was going through that list too like pretty much every nick tune had at least one or a few mm-hmm. of them and i i, I like, always vaguely recall all of them. Rugrats was Rugrats was the big one because they had three Christmas episodes, two Hanukkah episodes, and one Kwanzaa episode. Yes. Thank you. Nine seasons. Yes. Nine. There's nine seasons of Rugrats, not including All Grown Up, which went on for another four. That's insane. Yeah. And three movies. Two movies. Three theatrical movies. So you had the Rugrats movie, Rugrats in Paris, and Rugrats Go Wild. Yeah. Uh, I I don't. You had the all grown up movie, my God, uh, which was not theatrical. I think that might have been it. Okay, let's say that was it. When they when they got to the all when they did all grown up, especially the movie, 
Am I? I might be conflating my cartoons, but was, was there like a romantic plot between some of the kids at that point? Uh, like kind all of. Grown up? Like, like uh, with... Tommy and Kimmy always had a thing. Obviously, you could tell. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Kimmy. Which one was Kimmy? Kimmy was the sister that came in after Rugrats in Paris. Oh, so Chucky's pl- sister. Yes. Yeah. So the plot of Rugrats in Paris, for those who don't remember, it's the best of the Rugrats films. Chaz, uh, Chucky's dad uh finds the the subplot is chucky trying to find a mom again oh my god i just realized they're both named charles yeah never got that continue Mm -hmm. please um yeah so Chaz is trying to find a new wife chucky wants a new mom there's a very heartbreaking song called i want a mom that lasts forever talking about how his mom died when he was a baby yeah real heavy for a two-year-old yeah um and so they meet uh kimmy and i don't remember the mom's name anymore uh, but they get married at the end of the movie. And then after that point, Kimmy is part of the gang in the same way that Dill was part of the gang after the first Rugrats movie. Okay, got it. Mm-hmm. Kimmy's great. Oh, I just realized it's Dill Pickle. It is Dill. You did not. You never got that? I was never a big Rugrats person. Okay, yeah, it was Dill Pickles. Uh, you had Lou Pickles, Stu Pickles, and Drew Pickles. Yep. Um, and then... Tommy. Tommy, yep. What was the, the mom's name? Dee Dee. Okay, Dee Dee Pickles. Yeah, I was like Deirdre, no Dee Dee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dee Dee. Uh, you had Howard, Howard or Howie, and I don't remember the twins' mom's name, but she was like the super fitness, like, Yo, crazy. That's house, right. Like, yeah, she uh, was always like the leg warmers, mm-hmm. and yeah, <clears throat> she was awesome. And then what was Angelica's mom's name? Uh, oh, because that was my mom. That was one hundred percent just my mom. Uh, it was Drew and. Oh, God, what is it? This is driving me nuts. And I apologize to everyone screaming at their whatever listening device. It makes you feel better. No one's screaming into the listening device. I would be. (laughs) What is her name? Charlotte. Charlotte. There we go. Because it was Charlotte and Cynthia. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wait, okay. So are any of the Rugrats holiday specials then on your list? No. They're not. They're not. They're not amongst your favorites. They, I, I've. I've gone back to them a few times and they're okay. Mm-hmm. I think their Hanukkah episodes are better than their Christmas episodes. Okay. Which also, as it should be, because we're, I mean, we're basically going to talk almost exclusively about Christmas stuff. You and I both celebrate Christmas, but like there is a, a general lack of good like Hanukkah yeah. content. Out I there. have one on my top 10 list. I have one Kwanzaa episode. You do? I do. <laughs> I can't wait to get to that. I'm trying to think of what show that would have even been from. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So like, what are, so when you were going back, so, okay, so did you have all these off the top of your head, the, your your list of stuff? Or Nine like, of the ten. There's one that I found yesterday that has quickly made it to the number ten slot. Okay, so what have you watched so it far this year? Um, this year, I've, I've, I've done my Elf rewatch. Yep. Uh, I've done my all of the other reindeer rewatch. It's on my list. All of, okay. is, all of is great. I I haven't seen it in years, but I remember the year that came out. It was mm-hmm. this big deal because it was like this cross media thing where they had the book and the stuffed animal. They had the the animated TV special. Mm-hmm. There's probably an album. I don't it even know. It was written by Matt Groening. Was it? Yes. So the the um, I think it's the mailman. The villain is voiced by Homer. Oh, Dan Castellaneta? Yeah. Oh, shit. That's right. I mean, I remember all of his voice by Drew Barrymore. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is a this is a Simpsons movie. Holy shit. I honestly, when I wrote that down here, I thought I was gonna be like, oh, hey, do you have to remember this random thing? All of the other reindeer? Of course I do. Which was Are the, you kidding me? Which was the Shadows of the Empire of the Christmas movies. <laughs> <laughs> shit, you had that on there, too. Of course I did. I haven't. I, gotta, I love Olive. I haven't seen it in years, but I really like it because, like, the, the whole conceit of it is that it's this, this dog named Olive who thinks that she is all of the other reindeer from the song about Rudolph. Mm-hmm. That's a really cute conceit. Yes. You. Who knew you could write a whole movie about a simple misunderstanding? Yeah. She's like, she doesn't. She like end up in the letters to Santa, and she ends up. Yeah. So she she does end up being on the sleigh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry for the spoilers for people who haven't this... seen all of the other reindeer. Tw- 15, 20 year old. Yeah, it was like 2002 ish. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere around there. there. But oh, yeah, man, I, I mean, it, it played on Cartoon Network every day for Christmas, every year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, for the Christmas season. 
whenever I hear the song Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer... You hear it now, don't you? I always think of all the other reindeer. So the other reindeer. So I was listening to the other day when I was in the car, because I'm, I'm desperately trying to get into the Christmas season. It's hard to do in LA. Yeah. Um, but that came to mind that I had a follow-up thought, which was like, holy shit, like, they had to really heavily market that. Think about how much harder marketing would have been back in the day before social media, when you couldn't yeah. just, like, target people specifically. They had to find a way to get people to care about this completely new Christmas thing coming along. Mm -hmm. I mean, Elf did it. Elf has submitted itself. But El Elf had the advantage of being a theatrical release movie. Yeah. Right? It's like, a, a movie always helps, but when you're like a, a TV special slash book slash whatever thing, that's a lot harder to actually like guarantee you're going to get in front of people. Mm -hmm. Like, you actually have to put like the box with the book and the stuffed animal like, on displays everywhere. You have to like put a shitload of commercials out there for the TV special when it airs. Like, that's hard. Yeah. That's hard work. Uh, there's a YouTube channel that I think I've brought up before on here called Rebel Taxi. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It does uh, great, uh, like, animated uh, reviews and, and um, just kind of g generic videos about those older cartoons. And what I love so much, because I watched his Christmas special yesterday in preparing for this, mm -hmm. and I, I love it so much that he injects commercial breaks in his channel which are the commercial breaks from cartoon network and nickelodeon oh that's so from cool. the like from the holiday time yeah so is he focusing specifically on like the the cartoon episodes kind of like the way that you uh, put your it, was, list it was kind or? of a it was kind of a mix okay um because it was the one that i mentioned to you which was this horrible horrible special uh done by the wayne brothers oh yeah which was a like a black charlie brown which has all like every Every trope you could imagine you fit into a movie from the late 90s or early 2000s, they hit it. Yes. There's a card game in there. <laughs> There's uh, a lot of rapping in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's bad. Was there a lot of um, very homophobic jokes at the time were just like part of the normal Probably, and I just didn't, I didn't see that bit. Okay. Uh no, like, well, because you, you mentioned it before we started recording, like you watched a, what was it, an eight minute video yeah. <laughs> breaking down a 24 minute episode of television. Yeah. And I made a comment about how to you that seems reasonable. To me, that seems ridiculous. I would just watch the 24 hour episode, like 24, excuse me, minute episode of TV. Mm -hmm. But that's crazy that to me that seems more reasonable. Yeah. I guess I have to do, man. This, so do I. <laughs> um, yeah, there was one. I, I want to pitch this to you because I think you're going to love it. Okay. It's this bizarre thing that I learned about yesterday. Have you heard of Super Santa? No. Okay. So back in 1998 or late 90s, there was a segment on Nickelodeon called Oh Yeah Cartoons. Okay. Do you remember Oh Yeah? It's vaguely. Uh, it's what premiered like Fairly Odd Parents and Super Santa and a couple of the other things. Let me find my notes about this. <clears throat> Super Santa is a parody of 1960s Batman, Johnny Quest, uh, and and like early Hanna Barbera stuff. It's on Nickelodeon. It it ha there were four episodes of this, four eight minute episodes. I'm trying to look it up here, and it's the funniest thing. Oh, it it has the look of like an early Hanna Barbera. Yeah, where Santa is a superhero alongside Mrs. Claus. Uh, and the one episode I watched was called uh, Naughty, which is where Scrooge's great grandson Elmer Scrooge is an eccentric billionaire who buys who buys up all of Chemical Bad. Love it. <laughs> yep. Uh, Already and, and gases all of the neighborhoods across what? the world to make all the children naughty, so they all have to go on the naughty list with him. Uh, and then there's this amazing shot of all the elves going into the coal mine. And one of them getting the black lung. <laughs> it's this bizarre this is show. So dark. I love it. Uh, and then there's a moment where uh, Santa and Mrs. Claus show up, and he has a giant gas powered robot or coal powered robot fueled by all the coal he got as a child. <laughs> And I'm like, what is going on? I love every bit of this. This is in four minutes? This is in eight minutes. Wow. Yeah. That is There's four, it's four eight-minute episodes. That is some very efficient storytelling. Yeah. Holy and I am so excited to go to the other three. Shit. All right. I have to go check this down. I'm like, I think I found some like images of it online. And yeah. Where Santa's like this short, super buff guy. Yeah. It's 
super bizarre and I'm really here for it. It's so good. It was so funny. Okay, so wh- what other things are on your list? Like, what have you been watching so far this year? What are your go-tos? Uh, the Futurama episodes. Okay, All yes. the Christmas Futurama Yeah, I have just great. the first one on there for me, Xmas Story. Yeah. I think I've, that one I've seen multiple times. The other ones I don't think I've seen quite as often. I love that one. I love the one where Bender has to take over. Yes. I was, like, doing a Wikipedia read on some of these. Mm-hmm. Uh, Simpsons has... Uh, so many. Well, I just I just watched the first one because the first episode of The Simpsons is a Christmas episode. Isn't that when they get Santa's Little Helper? It is where they get Santa's Little Helper. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is called. I wrote the name down. Uh, Simpson roasting on an open fire. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Marge has to Bart gets a tattoo, so Marge has to spend their savings on Bart's tattoo removal. Yeah, and then coincidentally, Homer doesn't get his Christmas bonus. So they have no money for presents for the kids. Aww. Yeah. And so he goes and gambles the last bit of money he has at the, ho- at the dog race. Yeah. And bets it all on Santa's little helper. He gets last place. <laughs> and then his, uh, the owner of the dog abandons him and he runs into Homer's arms and they take him home as the present. That is so sad. <laughs> it's so dark. Yeah. That's really, really This was sad. the first episode of The Simpsons. Yeah, uh, man, that definitely went through some tonal revisions yeah. uh, over time. Uh, I love that one. The recess one, now that Disney Plus is out, mm-hmm. I've watched um, Third Street Christmas, which is great, where uh, Mikey loses his belief in Santa, and so he doesn't want to sing anymore. Uh, and so a, a guy comes out and you know kind of reinvigorates his, his will to sing, and then he goes and sings on like national television, Aww. and it's beautiful. And it's a great episode. Uh, what else have I watched? Those are kind of the main ones I've watched this year. I, I listened to the soundtrack to SpongeBob because they have a great Christmas episode. I've, I have seen so little of SpongeBob and I feel like I'm very much missing out. It's shaping up to be such a wonderful holiday. That's just the perfect kind of weird meta thing that SpongeBob <laughs> would absolutely do. Yeah. It, I think it's the first time we see Patchy, which is the human pirate played oh. by Tom Kinney. Oh, that's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, I think that's the first patchy episode uh but yeah it's where sandy uh is is sad because no one is there to celebrate christmas with her and so she teaches all of bikini bottom what christmas is i think i have seen that episode actually it's a great song it sounds really kind of it sounds familiar and squidward is obviously the humbug of it all the the scrooge of it all as he always is like i have seen just little bits and pieces so i have like little vague memories here and there of spongebob Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, what, what do you watch? I have, I have a couple more, but I want to save them for a, a deeper conversation. Okay, so I... Specifically two. Okay, I'm more of, um, I'm more of a movie person yeah. than TV. So I was like trying to figure out what, like, the TV stuff. Um, you know, I do love the Futurama Christmas episodes. Um, yeah, I, like, I remember growing up loving the Christmas episodes of the shows I already loved, right? So like, I grew up watching Home Improvement and Friends, and I always loved those episodes. But like, I don't really remember the plots to any of them, really. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, everyone remembers the like some of the classic Thanksgiving episodes, like the classic Thanksgiving episode, especially of Friends, right? But I don't really remember a lot of the, the Christmas ones. Don't remember Armadillo Man? Oh, the holiday Armadillo! Yeah. That's right, yeah. Okay, that one is really good. Negligent on my part for forgetting it. Um, but I, you know, because I didn't go back and revisit them for a long time, like they never really came to me, but I always had my, my staple of Christmas movies. And so the first... The one that like, I have to watch every year, and the first movie I watched this year, is the 60s animated Grinch. Oh, it's amazing. Have we, talked about, we talked about the sequels, right? What? It's a, the, the, the Dr. Seuss Grinch is a trilogy. What? Yeah, I just found Wait out about this this year. Wait a minute. Where, where can that story possibly go to uh, warrant sequels? Prequels. Okay. So the second one is a prequel... Uh, called The Grinch Day, which is a Halloween episode. It's a Halloween short featuring The Grinch that won an Emmy for, like, best song. It's still a musical. Really? Yeah, just no one talks about it for some reason. Uh, and then there's a third one. Wait, what's the plot? I haven't watched it yet. Oh. Uh, I, was, I was supposed to watch it with my friend, but we just never coordinated. And now I think I'm going to save it till next Halloween. Okay. All right, so there's a... Ha- Okay, so there's a Halloween prequel episode of The Cringe. Oh, and wait for the third one. You're going to love it. It's Easter. No. Fourth of July. It's a, it's a versus. Grinch versus f- Santa versus Frosty. The cat in the hat. Oh, my gosh. I should, <laughs> I should have guessed. Yeah, the Grinch versus the cat in the hat. 
Who wins? I haven't watched it. But uh, you're just gonna show up here <laughs> and drop this bomb. It, it's a bomb, that, right? That there are follow ups to the Boris Karloff '60s animated Grinch. Yeah, around how same art style, same and uh, same voices. Yeah, and you're just gonna drop this and then not have any sort of like follow through. Yep, Cameron, you. It's called being a tease, Chris. I I'm getting serious Grinch blue balls over here. Exactly. Green balls. Harry balls. Hey, let's. <laughs> no, I, I'm going to save us from this tangent before it gets too far and too gross. Um, I had no, but that's crazy. I had no idea. Cause like, yeah, I, I, was I, I literally found out about this three months ago. Yeah. Cause I feel like the, you know, the conversation around the Grinch is usually like, Oh, what's your version of the Grinch? Mm -hmm. Like I know a lot of people that cannot live without the Jim Carrey version, which I have no time for whatsoever. It has moments. So I was on the phone with my parents the other day and uh, they said that they had been watching it with the family that it was on the, the rest of my family that doesn't live in LA down here. Um, and they made a comment about how there's a, a flashback scene of the Grinch when he's a kid mm -hmm. and he goes to like a party where a bunch of adults are there. I don't know if his parents are there or what, but he's at this adult party and in the background, well, he, the, the, he's an orphan. He's an orphan. That's right. Yeah. In the background, you see all of the who's showing up to the party, dropping their keys into a bowl and they're all swingers. Yeah. Did you know this? I did not know that. <laughs> Which made me want to go back and rewatch it. And be like, wait a minute. If this is just is this just something that's casually thrown into a Grinch film that all of the Who's are swingers, mm -hmm. or can we then see evidence evidence of it throughout the rest? Of yeah. Why do you think they all celebrate every holiday together? No one knows whose parent is who. I guess that's true. That's why they're called the Who's. Exactly. Oh my god, it all makes sense now. We've uncovered the conspiracy. The conspiracy. So, like, at some point, I should go back and rewatch it. I mean, obviously, Jim Carrey's great in it, but for me, it just it didn't land when I saw it. Yeah, it, then, it's worth going back, because I think you appreciate it more as an adult. Okay. And then, have you have you seen the, the Benedict Cumberbatch one from last year? I have. What did you, maybe we talked about it last year. I didn't see it. How was it? Uh, it was fine. It I think it it takes good moments from both of them, because mm -hmm. it kind of, it's kind of its own version of it. Sure. Um. And yeah, it takes good moments from both, but I don't, I don't think it lands near either of them. Okay. But I like the art style. Yeah, the art style is cool. The, mm -hmm. the only thing I remember from that trailer, there was one thing that, one moment that always made me laugh when I was in the trailer, and it was when he's trying to creep through the snow, and, yeah, and Max crunches. behind him, like jumping through the snow, and it's crunching. Yeah, that one, that's the yeah. one thing that always made me giggle, but... Um, okay, so your version of the Grinch is also the 1960s animated one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that's on my list. Uh, I've also watched so far this year the Santa Claus, the Tim Allen movie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing the second one in theaters and not really caring for it. I don't think I've ever revisited it. I never bothered with the third one. Mm -hmm. But I love that first one. Yeah, the first one's. I think the second one's also pretty good. Because mm -hmm. uh, then you deal with the dilemma of like his son is on the naughty list. Yeah. Uh, while also trying to find a wife. Oh yeah. <laughs> Which I think so is, that, those like, the funniest two weird plots happening. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I really love the first one because I really enjoy, still to this day, Tim Allen's just like really snarky, sarcastic commentary. Yeah. And as an adult, you, you really understand all the jokes he makes about the stepdad, Neil, and they are fucking hilarious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's another one too that's like, I feel like part, maybe part of the reason the Christmas movies are so good is... That they they usually uh, address some sort of like real relatable inherent sadness in the world, and then they kind of overcome that with something like really positive. Because you go back and watch even the Santa Claus, and it's really about this like this shitty dad, mm -hmm. like this guy who has like no time for anyone else, especially his own son. Brings his kid to a Chinese restaurant for Christmas. Uh, no, it's Denny's. Oh, it's Denny's. That's right. It's Denny's. It's the only thing open. And so mm -hmm. there's like some like uh, there's a bunch of Japanese tourists in town. They all go to Denny's. That's what it is. Okay. But he's like there with all the other like single dads who like can't cook and like the guy's got a bandage on his hand from the fire and stuff like that. And, yeah. You know, it's it's actually like inherently really sad and like Tim Allen's mean to his kid. It's like a good part of it. Um, but you know, of course, by the end, it's like super it's super touching. He even likes Neil by the end of it. <laughs> but I love Neil. I mean, you can't go wrong with Judge Reinhold. Yeah. Um, that's one of my go-tos. We have a, uh, a Lord family tradition of every year, uh, Christmas Eve, after we get back from dinner at my aunt and uncle's house, we all, all, my mom doesn't really participate. My dad, my brother, and I sit down and watch Bad Santa. Okay. Which, 
from I think it's actually maybe the Christmas movie I've seen the most because <laughs> we watch it every year. Have you ever seen it? I have seen Bad Santa. Yeah. Yeah, we watched two. I think maybe last year. It's not With, particularly, uh, not particularly what, good. Who's the actor again? Billy Bob Thornton. That's the name. Yeah. Yeah, Billy Bob Thornton's in it. Uh, yeah. Oh, and actually, the kind of sad thing about that movie is like, pretty much all the supporting cast is now gone. You're right. Yeah, I, just, I, I like a sneeze is like right here. Oh, okay. And it's not coming out, and it's super like frustrating. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, it's uh, no. It's, I'll just jump. Yeah, back the, in. the cast is. Yeah, that is sad. Yeah, because I, I mean, um, yeah, Bernie Mac, John Ritter, and then. Um, Tony Cox, they, they've all since passed, which is really, uh, really quite sad. Aww. So, But, I mean, I love the movie. It's super funny. And, again, like, it's dark. It's raunchy. It's inappropriate. There's so many F-bombs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I love it. Um, but, you know, again, it's, it's got a hopeful message at the end. Like, you know, he, like, gets shot trying to get the kid his little pink stuffed elephant. Mm-hmm. Do you watch uh, Jingle All the Way ever? It's on my list. It's one that I I've watched a lot more as a kid. I haven't seen it in a few years. Okay. Have you revisited it recently? Uh, like two years ago. How does it hold up? We watched it. It's pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The hiccups okay? Yeah. We're just a mess right we, now. We really are a mess right <laughs> now. Oh my I know. god. No, I mean I have that on there. Um, okay, here's another conversation point. Uh, which is which of the two? Let's be honest. It's just two. Is your home alone? Which one's better? Oh man. Talking like one or four? Is that the question? Exactly. Uh, I think the first one. Okay. Mm -hmm. I maintain that Home Alone 2 is a better film. Okay. I I haven't watched that one in a while. One, it has the incredibly stacked supporting cast. Of of, Donald J. Trump? Yes, of (laughs) classic Christmas hero Donald J. Trump. Yep. Uh, But also Rob Schneider and Tim Curry. That's right. The great Tim That's Curry. That's right. I forgot Tim Curry's in it. As the manager of the hotel. Yes. Um, so good. And I, I cannot remember the actress who who plays the the bird woman or the actor who plays the the owner of the toy store. But like fantastic supporting cast. Obviously, New York's gorgeous. Fantastic new booby traps. But for me, it takes the cake um, for two moments. One is when uh, Tim Curry realizes that the credit card is stolen and his grin matches the animated Grinch grin, like mm-hmm. t- tooth for tooth. Yeah. It's perfect. And the other favorite line I have is when the mom played by the amazing Catherine O'Hara is like, what kind of idiots you have working here? The finest in New York, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. Absolutely love those movies. Um, those are usually on there. Like, Okay, uh, when do you watch Night Before Christmas? What time of year do you watch it? Halloween. Okay, yeah, I also watch it as Halloween. Um, have you ever seen the Star Wars Christmas special? I have not seen the Star Wars Christmas special. I haven't either. Special. It's on my list. I've never seen it. I think... It's ev- not on Disney+. Plus. It's not, and it's like super hard to find. I think yeah. it's like Lucas has done his best to kind of bury that. Um, okay, I got some other ones for you here. Oh, what's your opinion of Love Actually? I really enjoy it. I do too. Uh, I, I enjoy it, but I do think... Um, the holiday is better. You know, I've actually never seen the holiday. The holiday is my mom's favorite Christmas special, and she really sold me on it. Because that's the the Cameron Diaz, Jack Black, Jack Black one. Yeah. Um, yeah and always... uh, like who else is in? Um, <laughs> Jude Law and Kate Winslet. Yeah. Oh man, it's so good. That's a stacked cast. It's right there. so good. Yeah, I've, I've never watched it. Maybe I'll, yeah. maybe I'll add that to my rotation. That, that's this that's year. a that, that one's worthy of a, of a watch. Because. There, I feel like there is like, okay. So real quick, on love actually. Like I still love that movie. Mm-hmm. It's got a great soundtrack on it. Um, obviously, it gifted us with "All I Want for Christmas Is You," and I maintain the little girls version. I didn't is, realize that. I thought it did. I thought that was original to that movie, wasn't well, it? Well, that song came out in '98. The movie came out in 2003. Well, then never mind. I'm a dirty liar. But I think the little girls version of it is better than the Mariah Carey version. Okay. And I love the Mariah Carey version. Hmm. Um. I mean. Some of that movie does not hold up particularly well now. Yep. There are definitely some dated elements of it, um, but I'm sorry. But you, you have to watch it just for the Emma Thompson scene. Yeah. Oh, man, it's so good. It's so, it's, she's so good, and it's so heartbreaking. Well, that and then also uh, Hugh Grant dancing around. Yeah, so ten, Hugh Grant is also... Downing Street. Hugh Grant is my mom's favorite actor. I can understand. He's so charming. Mm-hmm. Has she ever seen um, Nine Months? Probably. Okay. I think she's she claims to have seen every Hugh Grant movie. Okay, mm-hmm. I'll have to ask her about it next time I see her because I I love that movie Nine Months. Have you? Have you ever I've seen never it? seen it. No. So it's from. Is it a parody of? Uh, oh, 
what, what's the one where Schwarzenegger gets pregnant or DeVito gets pregnant? Oh, no, it's, uh, that's... Oh. Shit, I was going to say Mr. Mom, but that's the that's Michael Keaton. Maybe it's that's what I'm thinking No, the, Michael Keaton's a stay-at-home dad. No, there is one. It's Junior. Oh, okay. Junior's movie where Arnold Schwarzenegger gets pregnant. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure Danny DeVito's in it. Great. Because he's also in Twins. Yep. Um... What a power duo. What a power duo. They should come back. They absolutely should. Well, there, there's been rumors for years they're going to do a third Twins movie with uh, Eddie Murphy. Okay. Which I told you it was down for. But no, so nine months. It's it's from around this. It's like early 90s. Like kind of, it's got a similar setup going on as say like a Mrs. Doubtfire, like the same era. Mm-hmm. But it's Hugh Grant is dating Julianne Moore and then she gets pregnant. And so he like has a this existential crisis and he's trying to decide whether he wants to stay with her or not. Um, his best friend is played by Jeff Goldblum. Great. I'm in. Already amazing. And then his wife's best friend, sister, I forget the relationship, but uh, um, Joan Cusack is like the best friend of the wife mm-hmm. of Joanne Moore's character. Her husband is Tom Arnold. Jesus. And like Tim, like Tim Allen and Tom Arnold fall into this weird category for me of people who like, I know are kind of problematic, especially today, but of a certain era, I fucking love their, their comedy. Yeah. And there's this amazing sequence in nine months where, uh, Hugh Grant and Tom Arnold get into a fart with a Barney S character in the middle of a toy store. It is fantastic. That's great. I recommend it. Oh, and Robin Williams plays like some weird Eastern European gynecologist. Amazing. I feel like I've seen parts of this movie. Like, I feel like it's been playing somewhere I was at. Yeah. And I'm always just like, who? why are these people all together? It's what a weird combination. I think it's one of those that I just discovered randomly on TV one day. I'm like, oh, I love this movie. I've maybe seen it once in its entirety. Okay. But it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, where was I in terms of like, oh, um, okay. So a movie that I watched for the first time last year that I actually wasn't as keen on as I was hoping was National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Okay. You said it's on your list, right? It's like one of your go-tos. It's 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 like my favorite background film. Okay. Like I don't like I don't think I could tell you the full story of that movie, mm-hmm. but I know I've watched it seven times. Okay. Interesting. I I can see the appeal. It just didn't quite work. I for get it. Me. Yeah. I think maybe if I had seen it as a kid, it would gel a little bit more. Yeah, because that was my thing. I didn't see it until like college. Yeah. And I, and I think part of it is I grew up with other National Lampoon movies. This one was like, mm, it's kind of okay. For some people, it's like their favorite Christmas movie. Which, mm-hmm. you know, to each their own. Yeah. Um, I, I have, I'll, I'll go through some of my lesser cartoon ones okay. really quick. Uh, oh, so the Kwanzaa episode. I'll talk about that for oh, a yeah, second. Oh, yeah. What's the Kwanzaa episode? The Proud Family has oh. the best, I think it's one of the best holiday episodes ever. Mm-hmm. And it's the day after Christmas. They all come back home, uh, and a family comes to their door asking for, like, you know, just kind of help and need. And Oscar, the dad, is much like, no, why would we do that? He's like, well, it's the holiday spirit. It's Kwanzaa. Yeah. Uh, and so they let the family in and stay with them for a couple days and teach them all about Kwanzaa traditions. Mm-hmm. And it's just so wholesome. And there's not a lot of, I mean, all the jokes are at, like, Oscar's expense for not knowing anything. Yeah, for being ignorant. Um, but yeah, I, I remember so vividly that playing every year on Disney Channel and just like being so in th- cause like no one ever tells that story. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not a particularly widespread version of the holidays. Yeah. Aside from Kwanzaa from oh, great drama. <laughs> oh, Kwanzaa and the, the zombie rabbi, right? Yep. yep. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a big one for me. I, I try and watch that every year if I can find it. Uh, Proud Family is also not on Disney Plus. Really? Isn't that heartbreaking? That is surprising. So I'm gonna have to hunt it that, down somewhere I think else. It's one of the pretty well regarded shows on. Yeah. There. So I, I have a theory because there's like five or six animated shows from like a five year window around that time mm. that all aren't on there. Oh, and so I feel like the studio that animated them because it's all they all have the similar look. Yeah. So I think it was the same studio. Oh, it could be. Uh, and I think they're just like not giving up certain rights okay so you have like pepper ann isn't on there lloyd in space isn't on there um proud family isn't and dave the barbarian oh okay. all have a very similar art style yeah um yeah so that one is great the powerpuff girls special is really really good it's uh do you remember princess the no. rich girl oh vaguely so the story is princess 
sneaks into the North Pole and changes Santa's list to make her nice. And her wish is getting superpowers to rival the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, my God. Uh, and so it's the four of them. So then it's the three girls who are all now on the naughty list yeah. trying to make it up to the North Pole while Princess is trying to stop them. That's fantastic. Uh, and it's so funny and it's so well done. It's beautifully, like amazing fight sequences. Mm-hmm. Uh, highly recommend that one. Uh, and then I'll do one more weird one. Uh, Kids Next Door. <laughs> okay, I knew there was going to be a Kid Next Door on here somewhere. Operation Naughty mm-hmm. is, uh, they they plucked it a, a pretty low-hanging fruit that I don't think anyone's plucked from yet. Okay. Uh, so you have X-Men Xmas. Okay. Uh, so the delightful children from down the lane kidnap Santa. Mm-hmm. And so the uh, Alpha team. Yes. Um, yes. Who, who is a parody of the X-Men. Yes. Uh, go to get the KND's support of getting Santa back. Okay. So you have um, uh, Peppermintanium is the main guy's Wolverine. And so he has um, candy cane claws that, that come from his knuckles. Uh, you have a Cyclops is, parody. Is this them? That's them. Oh, my God. This uh, is fantastic. You have Nightcrawler Nutcracker. So Nutcracker that can teleport. There's one that I think has present beams. So he, <laughs> he, like, he has his goggles like Cyclops, and he shoots presents out. Oh, uh, and then you have a Colossus parody that God. turns into a, um, like a, a tree that sheds really badly. Yeah, there's a Storm parody back here. It looks like an angel. But this Wolverine parody it's is so, good. so fantastic. It's so good. It's oh, so funny. Operation Naughty is such a good my one. Oh, God. This is so fantastic. Uh, and then I, I just want to talk about this for a second because this might be my favorite. Cause this is something that is like, I don't have a lot on my must watch, but this yeah. is always a must watch for me. And I sing it all year round, but Nick put out these two, two minute claymation shorts back in early 2000. Mm-hmm. They didn't do anything with them besides just making bumpers, but it's the 12 days of Nick miss. Okay. So you have all of the, and there's like a, a theory that, uh, it's all in canon in this in the SpongeBob universe. Love it, um, but it's every character from every Nicktoon up until like 2002 mm-hmm. singing their version of the 12 Days of Christmas. So it's 12 bubbles blowing from SpongeBob, 11 clones attacking from Jimmy Neutron, 10,000 places I'd rather be right now from Wild Thornberries, <laughs> nine reindeer droppings from As Told by Ginger, eight wacky wishes from Fairly Odd Parents, seven thousand pounds Fairly Odd Parents, six jamming jellies from SpongeBob. Five incredibly expensive golden rings uh, from As Told by Ginger. Three or four dudes of shredding from Rocket Power. Yep. Three cans of hairspray from Hey Arnold. Mm-hmm. Uh, two turtles love from Failure Odd Parents and a starfish on a pine tree. That's amazing. And it's the cutest thing. And I watch it multiple times a year. I I feel like those, that sort of bumper stuff isn't really done anymore. It's not right. And like those bumpers were amazing. Yeah. And so that's one of the things going to the, the Rebel Taxi point is what Cartoon Network used to do was the same thing. They had this thing called, uh, it wasn't CN Nation. It was like CN City, mm-hmm. uh, where they built a city. And, and unfortunately, this never took off into what they wanted it to be. But they built a city where all the Cartoon Network cartoons lived together. Yeah. And so you'd have bumpers where it'd be like, Samurai Jack next to Johnny Bravo at the laundromat. Oh, I remember washing those. their clothes together. Yeah, like walking down the street together and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And they were so good. And so there's a lot of Christmas bumpers like that. Yeah. Um, where it's like Dexter in line for Santa, who's played by Eustace from Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yeah. Uh, and they, they, there's one, because that one specifically is, is a um, Christmas story parody. Mm-hmm. So Dexter asked for like a disintegration ray. He's like, no, you're going to shoot your eye out. And he like, throws him off his lap. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, they were so good. And then the head of Cartoon Network, or the head of creative at Cartoon Network got fired. Oh. For a very dumb, dumb reason. What, what, Do we have time for this story? We always have time for these stories. Cameron. Great. So uh, they were promoting a new season. I believe it was of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Okay. And so the way they were doing it was in Atlanta, I believe. Atlanta or Chicago they placed these electric signs all around the city that were powered by a, an attached battery because they wanted them to shine for a couple days. Yeah. People saw those, and they saw this weird character, 
and they thought it was a terrorist attack, and they thought it was bombs placed all around the city. Oh, God. And the only people... So as the story goes, the head of the police didn't know what it was and immediately called for a bomb threat all around the city when his assistant was like, hey, no, that's just from a TV show. I promise it's not an actual thing. Yeah. And they just didn't listen to him. Uh, and so like the whole city was almost quarantined for a day as they were going around trying to take down all these bombs. Because from the look of it, you have a an unusual symbol with a big black battery pack. Yeah. Like it, it looks, if you don't know what you're looking at, it looks pretty threatening. It looks suspicious, yeah. Yeah, placed in like prominent areas because they wanted to get people to see it. Yeah. Um, and so to, uh, to correct that, uh, Turner, who's headquartered in Atlanta, uh, basically said, hey, that was us, that's our bad. To reconcile that, uh, this guy who's led creative at Turner for the past like 12 years yeah, we're just going to fire him and blame it all on him. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's awful. <laughs> it's so oh bizarre. Oh, my God. That's not like that's not where I was expecting that story to go, to be right? per- perfectly it's, it's honest. It's so bizarre. Yeah, it's like I was not expecting a, a bomb misidentified threat. bomb threat to be the source of his <laughs> departure. Yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> and so as that was happening, he had just set up CN City, which is going to be like a whole series. Yeah. Not just bumpers. Uh, where it was like you were going to actually have Scooby-Doo hanging out with, you know, all the other Cartoon Network characters. Oh, and then when, once he left, the, the idea just got scrapped. Oh, so sad. I know. Uh, let's see. What, what are my other weird ones? Because I, I, I want to save my last two because I think they're my by far my two favorite and by far the two I have to watch every year. Okay. Uh, I, well, we, I guess we can just talk about them now. Yeah. Uh, the Fairly Odd Parents Christmas special, Christmas Every Day. Okay. One best song in Fairly Odd, or mm, second best song in Fairly Odd Parents. Fair, fair. Shiny Teeth is unbeatable. My shiny teeth and me. My shiny teeth that twinkle just like the stars in space. Voiced by Chris Kirkpatrick, one of the members of NSYNC. Oh, that's right. Yep. Yeah. So all of Chip Skywalk's songs are NSYNC songs. That's amazing. Oh, uh, Christmas Every Day is not only a great Christmas episode, but a great like world building episode. Mm-hmm. So if you don't remember it, the way the story goes is uh, the way Santa is able to grant every kid's wish around the world is the fairies give up their magic to him for one day. Oh, okay. Um, and so even the fairies get presents. So everyone in the world gets a present based off of his magic. Mm-hmm. So Timmy wishes for Christmas every day, which means the fairies don't get their magic back. And Santa has to continue to expend all of this power uh, or he goes crazy. Yeah. So while all that's going on, Timmy trying to get up to the North Pole to fix it, uh, you have the other holidays that are now angry at Santa. Uh, so they're trying to kill Santa <laughs> and get the magic for themselves so they can be the all-powerful <laughs> holiday. This is fucking brilliant. <laughs> you have the Easter Bunny with grenade eggs. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. You have Cupid's arrow. Um and what are, what are the other ones? Because um, the the long like the the B plot joke of the show is um, Timmy hates Chris. Ha- Tim, Timmy hates Valentine's Day because he can never get a date. Yeah. Um, and then Timmy disguises himself as um, the birthday boy to be one of the holidays because there's Baby New Year who's like the the Hulk of them. Yeah. Oh, and then the April Fool. That's the last one. Yeah, I'm looking at it right here. Yeah, there's the there's Cupid, there's April Fool, the Easter Bunny, and God, then these are so clever. They're so fun. Like, I, the episode uh, is so good. I need to revisit this. Uh, What's the dog? There's oh, a wiener see. dog. Oh, that, that's Cupid's dog that he just likes to bring along with them. Uh, so I, I think they call him the Fourth of July weenie, uh, <laughs> but it's really just like it's just Cupid's dog that he he can't leave ever, <laughs> so he just brings him along with him. <laughs> so amazing oh yeah my it's God. so funny and so then like the the finale of the episode is all the kids have to use their wish combined to wish for the day after christmas i love it and they have a there's one joke because christmas lasts for like 34 days mm-hmm. um where it's the carolers trying to make up new things for the 12 days oh, of christmas yeah. <laughs> it's like on the 24th day of christmas my true love gave to me Slacks? Slacks? Slacks! <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Okay, wait, is that available somewhere? Because I really need to go watch this. I, um, 
so Viacom just had their deal with Netflix. So okay. it might be up on Netflix already. Okay. If not, then Fairly Odd Parents might be either on Hulu or Amazon. Okay. Uh, but I have that one on DVD. So that is a must watch for me. Oh my God, I gotta go back to that at some point. Uh, and then my number one Christmas special, which I watch every year and makes me tear up every year, is the Hey Arnold Christmas special. Is that the one with um, Mr. Huynh's daughter? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so Arnold, the boarding house Arnold lives at does a secret Santa. Arnold gets Mr. Huynh, and his Chris, the present he wants to get him is to reunite him with his daughter that was separated when they left Vietnam during the Vietnam War. Yeah. Let's just start there for a kid's <laughs> cartoon. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why I remember it. Like, it's... Yeah, it's, it's so... Because there's that shot where you see his daughter... They're in Vietnam, and you see his daughter in her crib... And from the window, you see the silhouette of the American uh, army just walking by. Yeah. And you're like, holy shit. Does, he convinces like an American soldier to take her on a helicopter, right? Yeah. Fuck. Mm -hmm. So they're separated when she's a baby. And then Arnold's trying to hunt her down through all of New York. Yeah. This nine-year-old. Yeah. He is nine years old, as we remember. Let us remember. He's in third grade. Hey, but I mean, that... That sweet room of his is this, beyond yeah, man, that of a nine-year-old. That room is yeah, the he's, coolest he's room. Precocious. Uh, so you have all that going on while Helga uh, wants one specific present she's trying to get, but also trying to find a present for Arnold. Um, where I think the end twist is she sells the boots that she got in order to like put out this message to find the daughter. Yeah. It's so, like she's the one that ends up finding her. That sounds right, yeah. And it's just like, oh, man. It's so good. This was a kid's show. I mean, but... <laughs> about, uh, about war refugees being separated. Yeah. And uh, look, I, mean, I haven't really seen a lot of, like, kids' content made in the last 15, 20 years. But, like, I will say this of the stuff that came out when we were that age. Like, they would deal with a lot of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Like, they, they weren't... They would do it rarely, but when they did, they weren't afraid to go to some, like, pretty intense places. Mm -hmm. I mean, even, which we'll get to in the next couple months, there's a static Christmas episode. Yeah. Which is about a homeless girl who ran, she has a mental disorder because she ran away from her parents because her mom died and her dad beat her. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's just trying to find a place to go for Christmas. Jesus. And has this frost power she can't control. Yeah. And it's like, what is going on? Oh, my God. It's intense. Yeah. So those are like you watch those every year. Those are my top two. Okay. I, those are my I'm, must to get into. This I'm gonna period. have to revisit both of those. I think this year because I, I do recall them vaguely. They sound a lot of fun. I feel like maybe watch the Hanger All first and then Palette Cleanse. With, yeah, because <laughs> the Christmas Fairly Every Day parents. song is so good. <laughs> I wish every day could be Christmas. Okay, so there's a few more things I want to hit here. Okay. Um, all right, so we've talked about a lot of like different like go tos. What is your your okay? What is your favorite sincere holiday? We'll call it movie. So, like, one that's, like, a genuine... Because I also want to talk about all, like, the non-Christmas movies that mm -hmm. are out there. that like, are set at Christmas. But before we get to that, what's, like, your most sincere favorite Christmas movie? Oh, probably The Holiday. Probably The Holiday. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about you? Because <sighs> I, I also didn't grow up watching a lot of those. Like, I never yeah. watched Wonderful Life growing up. I, I've never seen a Wonderful Life. I've never Neither seen I, yeah. Miracle on 34th Street. Same. I have seen White Christmas. That one's really good. Okay, I should watch that one at some point. I mean, like, I mean, there's like the TV, spe like some like the TV specials, right? So there was like, uh, Try Brown Christmas. There was Rudolph, Rudolph Rainier, Frosty, Jack Frost, yeah. where it's the, the guy who dies and turns into a snowman and tries to stop another guy from sleeping with his wife. Yeah. That's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's Michael Keaton. Yeah, it is. Michael, yeah, Michael Keaton. Keaton. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like someone explained to me that that was the plot of the movie and it just never clicked of like, oh yeah, he's a snowman clock, cock blocking a widow. Yeah. What a monster. Yeah. It's his fault he died, I yeah. think, if I recall. Yeah, I think uh, he was like on the phone while yeah. driving on an icy patch. I guess... Uh, uh, That's what I want to rewatch again, probably, Jack Frost. But we got to. We got to. Probably Love Actually. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched it yet this year, but like that's one I pretty much watch every year along with the, the Santa Claus. And like I, I don't really count the, the Grinch animated one because it's like 20 minutes long. Yeah. but Okay, so then I also want to talk about... Uh, all of the non-Christmas movies that are set at Christmas, mm -hmm. right? It's like everyone loves to have the debate like, oh, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yes, it's set at Christmas. I just think like the debate itself is not original or that that thing. But so like some lists I have is uh, Die Hard, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, mm -hmm. great film. 
uh, Batman Returns. Yes, right? Yeah. Yeah. My list stops there. I know there are more. But Gremlins I mean, for me. Oh, gr- oh, that's right. Gremlins. Mm, that, that's, is that's mine. Yeah, yeah Gremlins said at Christmas. I mean, pretty much anything Shane Black. So, um, yeah, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Iron Man 3. Yep. Would count. Uh, I think the nice guys is set at Christmas, but like it's only vaguely even referenced. No, I feel like that's summer. Maybe the end of it is set at Christmas. I think so. Yeah, yeah, it is because um, they invite what's his face over for Christmas. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yours is Gremlins. Yeah, I've never seen Gremlins. It's great. I need to watch it's, it. It's de- I I rewatched it for the first time like a couple months ago. And it holds up so well. And I've heard that Gremlins 2 is also pretty fun because it's just like weird and like yeah. kind of a meta commentary on Gremlins. Yeah. And also with all the hype around Baby Yoda right now, it's oh, funny to go yeah. back and rewatch Gremlins because yeah. it's just a remake of Gizmo. That's absolutely true. Mm-hmm. Except Gizmo sings. Yeah. Which makes him infinitely cuter than Baby Yoda. And that is my stance. And I will stand there forever. It's a very controversial opinion. Yeah. I disagree with you entirely. I think Baby Wait Yoda- till you hear Gizmo sing. And then he does a race car scene. He's watching a race scene on TV, and he grabs like, uh, like his pillow on his bed, on his little matchbox bed, and he's like acting like he's driving through the scene. And it's the fucking cutest thing in the world, Chris. You don't understand. But like, little baby Yoda. He's... I get it. He holds a cup of soup, and it's so relatable. Yeah. Who doesn't just stand there watching <laughs> drama unfold while sipping a cup of soup? You know who else did that? Kermit. Months ago, years ago, that meme already came out. Yeah, that was a cup of tea. It was. Yeah. And he was just like, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Baby Yoda cares. Baby, he doesn't know what's going on. He's just not, so he's so naive and adorable. Yeah. Also, can we just acknowledge the fact how egregious it is that no one planned for any sort of Baby Yoda merchandise for the holidays? It, they're rushing out the ugliest stuff. Yeah. Because I was on Shop Disney like two days ago, and there's just, it's literally a screenshot from the series on a t-shirt. Yeah, I know. And that's their Baby Yoda merch right now. I know, it's ridiculous. It's so funny. It's just, it's how, not... how did How did you not plan for this? I know. Star Wars is, like, infamously known for over-merchandising themselves. It's a merchandising empire. Yeah. And you delivered the cutest thing yet in a universe that's known for cute things, mm-hmm. and you don't have toys prepared for it? Yeah, the only thing they've done is at the park in, in Batu. uh... They moved the the Yoda plush toys from the back of the room to like the first thing you see, and so people are like, "Oh my god, it's Baby Yoda plush!" I'm like, "No, no, it's that's just, been there since you know the park opened." Yeah, it's just Yoda. Yeah, you, he just it's just Yoda in plush form. Yeah, so ignorant. Um, what else do you have? Do you have like do you have like a weird one? What's like your weirdest Christmas thing you remember seeing? I don't really have a weird one i have where I have, are you going with that i have one that i watch every couple years which is the boondocks christmas oh okay uh where the the plot is riley trying to rewrite the school christmas play to make it a black santa okay. and everyone up in arms about it and then um what's what's his brother's name i've never seen the boondocks it's, so oh it's know. it's it's worth watching i've heard it's really good yeah it's so funny um i have where is it uh huey sorry okay um yeah sorry huey is the one trying to make it a black no it's a black jesus okay uh even better yeah and then riley uh thinks he's on the naughty list so he goes to different malls beating up the santas (laughs) until they put him on the good list that's amazing (laughs) yeah that one's great yeah, uh, I didn't really have any weird ones. Like Wacko's Wish is a great one. Oh, I, yeah, I never. I think we have seen it once. That, I love that the one's definitely worth, but I've never seen too. it. Um, I don't. know. I think my yeah, it's probably my, my favorite sincere Christmas movie would be Love Actually, and then for like my off kilter one, probably Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Like mm-hmm. I love Batman Returns, but I love it so much that I don't feel like I have to watch it at Christmas. Yeah, but I, I love me some Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. It's mm-hmm. great. Um, but I mean, so at the end of the day, we are still a DCAU podcast and we do have a few episodes of the DCAU that are Christmas themed. Mm-hmm. So even though oh, wait, wait, quick, quick, do you have any Hanukkah things? No, I've never, I like, there's not a lot and I haven't really seen much of okay. it. So there's one Hanukkah movie. There's a Hanukkah decom called full court miracle, mm-hmm. uh, which is a, uh, a Jewish basketball team mm-hmm. trying to make it to the playoffs. Um, so it's a joke on full court press. Yeah. Um, and the, the big crux is there's a horrible snowstorm outside in the final game. The school uh, the school runs out, out of power. And so they use the external generator, and it only has enough 
uh, juice for what is it seven minutes yeah <laughs> of gameplay but it lasts you know like the whole quarter that's fantastic and they win yeah no it's it's, it's very i mean it's a decom yeah but it, it's that's cute it's very cute i like, I like that one a lot i like it um all right but then so we have a few b or a few dcau christmas episodes or holiday episodes mm -hmm. i think we've seen about half of them and i vaguely recall the other ones so we have uh Christmas with the Joker, which is the second episode. Yes, yeah, second episode ever of the series. So <laughs> that's I, what that's the one. Oh, that's the one where the Joker escapes Arkham Asylum by riding atop a rocket-powered Christmas tree. Yep, and that's where we first are introduced to Jingle Bells, Batman Smells, Robin Laid Neg. Did that not exist before? I don't think so. Oh, interesting. I mean, you would have been alive. I wasn't alive yet. That's true, but I wasn't. Really what does your memory say? <laughs> uh, it's all very blurry. Gotcha. Um. I mean, that one's pretty fun. Uh, then there's Holiday Nights from the new Batman Adventures, mm -hmm. which that's the great, um, like, uh, what would you call it? Like a triptych? Like the, the multi-part things? So yeah. there's the one with Clayface attacking the, the Christmas shoppers and Batgirl saving the day. There's, what is it? The second one, the other part of it's Harley and Ivy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's the first time we see their rework, their, their reanimation. That's right. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what they're up to. I don't remember anywhere either. The only part, the the part I remember the most is the New Year's Eve thing. And that's when Gordon and Batman mm -hmm. go to the same diner every year and like have a cup of coffee and just like chat for a minute. Yeah. And then Batman always like slips out the door and leaves behind cash. And Gordon has a great <laughs> comment. It's like, oh, one of these years I'm going to beat him to it. Mm -hmm. That's a great moment. It's just a good episode overall. It's a great episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that's right, because that one, like, it aired in a weird order because... That was, like, episode three or yeah, something. Yeah, it was early on in the run, but, like, chron like chronologically, it would have had to take place after Growing Pains, because mm -hmm. that was when Clayface was reintroduced, and he had been out at sea up to that point. Yeah. So it makes sense that he's back, but that's a good one. I, I don't remember the static episode, but you described it earlier about, like, the family coming in. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Justice League episode, Comfort and Joy, which the only parts I remember really... I feel like Batman does nothing. I feel like he's just alone on Christmas. I think so. Um, I only remember the part that we talked about with Superman and his presence. Yeah, exactly. So Martian Manhunter goes to stay with the Kents for Christmas. And even Superman, as an adult, I think still believes in Santa, one. And two, he always tries to like, see through his presence. And Pa makes a comment. He used to wrap his Christmas presents in lead so he couldn't see through them. Yeah. Oh, because I think... I think, oh, okay, because that episode was also when Green Lantern and Hawk Girl like, go to some random spot in the galaxy and get into, like, a bar fight. And it's, like, them really building towards a relationship right before Joker's Wild, which was, I think, the series, the season finale, which is when they finally, like... like no, like, Joker's Wild is B-Toss. What's the... What's that's, that's the one where he... That's the casino episode. Right. What's, um... What's the episode? What's the name of the Justice League episode where the Joker has the bombs planted all around Las Vegas? Oh, I don't know. And it's the introduction of the Royal Flush Gang. Yeah. But, like, at the end of that episode is when Hawk Girl gets injured, and that's when uh, Green Lantern finally acknowledges that he's into her and that they kiss up at the, um, the Watchtower, and then that segues into Starcrossed. But I remember really liking the Comfort and Joy episode. I'm trying to think off to my head which one's the best of them, though. Uh, so there's a segment with Flash and Ultra Humanite. Okay. According to this. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah, the, the last section is is Superman and John. Oh, what does Batman do? Nothing. What does so, Wonder Woman do? Nothing. Is she in the so, episode? Uh, no, it's three parts. So plot on an alien planet, the Justice League worked together to assemble a machine that would prevent it from colliding with another planet, thus saving its population. The mission is a success. Uh, and the league looks forward to Christmas season, except for perhaps John and Hawkgirl, who are unfamiliar with Earth holidays. So Green Lantern and Hawkgirl go to a snow planet. Oh, that's right. Flash yeah. gets a toy called DJ Rubber Ducky. Oh, um, yeah. And then Superman and John go back to the Kent's place. Oh, that's adorable. <clears throat> I remember really liking that episode. I'm excited, I'm excited to get back to yeah, it. I, 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 to vague, it yeah. I only remember that part with Superman. Yeah. But I don't know. Of, of, I guess what we've seen so far, I'd probably pick Holiday Nights over Christmas of the Joker. Agreed. Even though it doesn't have a rocket-powered Christmas tree. Um, and then I want to put an honorable mention in here. It's not technically in the uh, the DCAU, but it's something we both love. Do you remember the X-Men Evolution episode on Angel's Wings? 
Oh, I don't. Yeah, Let's so it's, it's, it. it's their one Christmas episode, and it's uh, the introduction of the character Angel. Okay. And so basically, there is someone in New York who is doing these small, like saving people, these small miracles everyone thinks is an angel. And so mm-hmm. they go down there and realize it's actually... Walter something, something. The Warren third. Worthington the third. Thank you, that's it. Yeah, in this little angel regalia. And I can't remember if it's that episode or a later episode, but there is an episode of that series where it gets all the original X-Men together. Like the main plot line revolves around. It's, it's, it's not that one, because I remember that episode. Yeah, maybe it's the last season. I think it no, it's later on because they have uh, Iceman at that point. He's like yeah. a younger recruit. But yeah, it's like Iceman sneaks away on a mission. I where love it's, Bobby. Yeah, it's, it's Beast, a- they Beast. Angel and then Gene and Cyclops and Bobby's mm-hmm. things along. It's really good. Yeah. But, all right. So then what's the next Christmas thing you're going to watch here? Is our, our final little thing. Oh man. Um, I haven't watched all of yet. I might, I might go to all of doing all of, um, I have, I have one for you. Okay. Because I watched this for the first time during the Christmas season, um, with my mom and it was very delightful, but that was the first time I watched Casablanca. So I might rewatch that uh, just to like make that my own Christmas movie. Uh, favorite movie. I know. Oh, it's so good. Because I have seen it, and you were very surprised when I said that. I was legit because <laughs> you haven't seen everything else. I know. You have seen all the things that no one has seen. Exactly. And none of the things that everyone has seen. Exactly. Which That's I guess what makes is, me it's unique. better to be original exactly. than to be a cliche. But in, in that, I am my own cliche. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You've become self-parody. Yes, I am my own brand. <laughs> But that happened a long time ago. Yeah. All right. Well, I re- totally respect your decision to go watch Casablanca. Mm-hmm. What's your next thing? Probably Love Actually. I haven't watched okay. it yet this year. Yeah. I, I also. Yeah. I haven't watched The Holiday yet. No. I'm gonna. I'm gonna watch Home Alone too. You. You sold me on rewatching Home Alone too. Home Alone too. It's, it's a classic. Mm-hmm. It's a Stone Cold classic. Yeah. Cause I have my nice flight to Denver mm-hmm. coming up soon. Oh, you know what? Actually, I know what it's gonna be. Where we started with this show, a Muppet Christmas Carol. Which oh, is. Oh, that's right. I still hands, have not seen it. Hands down, the definitive version. Of a Christmas character, Christmas oh, Carol. Polar Express. That's when I watch every year. What? No. I Polar, know. Like I that know. Weird, creepy. I know. But I watch it every year and I love it. They somehow turned Tom Hanks into this really creepy soulless monster. Yes. Which two I, creepy soulless two monsters. Creepy. I thought that was actually impossible to do. This is a man who is so genuine and pure. They got him to play Mr. Fucking Rogers. Yeah, I didn't like the movie. You didn't like it? No. I need to go watch it at some point. Mm-hmm. I've heard there's not as much Mr. Rogers as you would hope. It's no, he's not the main character. It's mostly on the, the guy, mm-hmm. the, the writer. But uh, only double. I I think I heard Muppet Christmas. There's either that one is not on there or Muppet Treasure Island is not on there. I, I'm pretty sure Muppet Christmas Carol is on there because I think I even saw it. But I own it. Yeah, Muppet. Okay, Muppet Christmas is. Let me double check. Is on Disney Plus. All right. So I guess. I'll go and watch it. All right. So we, you and I have homework for each other, Cameron. Mm-hmm. You need to go watch A Muppet Christmas Carol. I need to go watch the Hey Arnold's and Fairly Odd Parents Christmas movie. And Christmas Full Court specials. Miracle. And Full Court Miracle. <laughs> uh, but always, like, I would really genuinely love to know what people's favorite holiday movies are. Like, just even like kind of holiday traditions. Like, for you and I both being, like, kind of big film TV people, a lot of them mm-hmm. revolve around that. Yeah. Um, do, you, I, do you have any big, like... You said you have your tradition of watching the movie theater. Watching Bad Santa yeah. on Christmas Eve. Because our our kind of only holiday tradition is we always go see a movie on Christmas Day. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. What are you guys going to go see this year? I don't know. Yet. Probably Star Wars. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. my, my nephew is seven now. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, he's, he's old enough. Yeah, he's old enough for Star Wars. Mm-hmm. If not that, then I don't know, probably Frozen 2. Oh yeah, you you you've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Oh yeah, well, we'll have to we'll have to plug that one soon. Mm-hmm. If you ever talk I about I it. unfortunately just saw the Broadway Frozen, which I I I was I was I, hindered by two variables of having just seen Frozen two, which I think the new songs are better than the added songs in Broadway. Oh okay, I was about to say the original ones. Like, what? No, there's no, no, no. only one Belter in Frozen two. Yeah, yeah, and it's great though. So good. Also, Panda Disco version is better than the Adina mm-hmm. Menzel version. Oh, you, you don't like the um. The boy band song that Kristoff sings? Not my jam. I loved it. Oh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> Didn't work for me. Totally uh, understand why it works for I'm you. Because I'm lost in the woods. Um, but no, the Broadway one, it's it's okay. The new songs feel very like shoved into place. Okay. Where they're not really necessary. Okay. Except one, they give Oaken a song. 
<gasps> and it's so funny. The guy in the, the shop? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Chad Monokin. Okay. I'm so I'm seeing it sometime in January. I have tickets. I'm super okay. excited for it. That that's that's worth the ticket is seeing that song. Okay. Because it's so weird. For that price of mission alone. Um but then like people praised it for having like these amazing special effects. And they are amazing. But having just seen Cursed Child, which is like the peak of theater effects. Right. It, it was just like, oh, this is fine. It fell a little short for you? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. It was, it was very unfortunate. The, 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 I took Jamie. Yeah. Uh, and she loved it. Okay. So like, yeah, I'm pretty excited about yeah. it. Um, but no, in terms of like holiday traditions, not, not too much. Like we used to always go, all the family together go up and get a Christmas tree. We just do like fake trees mm-hmm. now. Um, do dinner with the family uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day we go to my grandparents' house. It's, it's, it's pretty standard we don't do anything like really particularly special my yeah. okay my, my single favorite part of christmas though um is our tree much like the tree i have in my apartment here completely loaded with nerdy ornaments right mm-hmm. so it's all the hallmark ornaments from the last 20 years so it's star trek star wars batman uh anything for like the space race so there's like a space shuttle gemini caps all sort of stuff yeah. and <laughs> You know, the older ornaments you would actually plug into the, the light strands. And so when you turn the tree on, all the ornaments would come on, but they'd all talk. That's cool. Oh, shit. So the thing about our Christmas tree is when you turned it on, it was like Darth Vader talking over Spock, talking over the Emperor, talking over John Glenn. That's sick. And like it would go on and on and on. And like the very last thing you would hear would be uh, the Death Star ornament because it's, you know, fire at will and it actually like boots up and they, they mm-hmm. shoot it. Um, but yeah, it, like there was this cacophony every time you turn it on. It's like that was my favorite thing as a kid. I was like every morning I like run down and turn the tree on and I'd listen to it talk for that's so cute for two minutes. Do you have a favorite ornament? Um, it's probably we have a uh, it's an old ornament and I think I may even have found a newer one recently because the old one we had was starting to wear out. But it's uh it's the original shuttlecraft from Star Trek from the mm-hmm. original series, and it's a message from Spock. It's not Leonard Nimoy, not even close to it. But it's like Spock wishing everyone a happy holiday. That's cute. Yeah. How about you? Uh, I, I have two that I love. And I stole one of them from my mom's tree. Because mm-hmm. we have like the family tree. We have my mom's tree. And then we had my tree. Okay. Um, so your mom could have a really nice, beautifully decorated tree. And yours was covered well, yeah, hers, hers was all like golden white. So yeah. all the ornaments had to be white or yeah. crystal. Okay. Uh, and then all the lights were uh, gold. Yeah. And yours was just super nerdy. Yeah. Mine was just like a kid's tree. Yeah. As it should. Uh, but she had this beautiful crystal Snoopy mm-hmm. holding a candy cane, which I really love. Oh. Um, and then when I moved out here, she finally trusted me with uh, the Snow White uh, ornaments. So it's, it's Snow and then the Seven Dwarfs, or six yeah. of the Seven Dwarfs, because we lost one. Oh. Um, but they're like, they're from 1993 when I was born. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was our first trip to Disney World. She bought Aww. these ornaments. Uh, yeah, so I, I put them on my tree very delicately. Aww. I'm very scared every time I take them out of the box. I'm sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. We've already lost one. Yeah, I think it's bashful. No one cares about bashful. Yeah, he was hiding away anyway, so it's yeah. fine. Oh, that's really adorable. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would love to hear what other people's like holiday traditions are. For yeah, your, your go-to holiday movies too. But um, I think that does it. I think we did it. All right. Well, if you want to send us along your traditions, your favorite movies, stuff, we are at Tip Talk Pod on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Gmail. That's right. Uh, if you want to see my archived art page, you can find that at camera.dexter. If you want to see my face and everything attached to it. You can find that at camdexter underscore adventures. Yeah. And if you want to find me, I am at Lordifer on uh, Twitter and Instagram. I'll, I'll try and put something up around Christmas. Yeah, I'll, I'll post. I haven't posted post, in like a month or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as this is, if you're listening to this the day it comes out, one, thank you. But uh, it is Christmas Eve. So yes, for those Merry who Christmas. celebrate, Merry Christmas. Happy and Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Kwanzaa. Merry Kwanzaa. Uh, what's the one from uh, Seinfeld? Festivus? Yeah. Happy uh, Festivus. Happy Festivus. Merry to Festivus. The rest of us. Uh, but no, happy holidays to, to everybody. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.